is always new every morning. Your mercy is always fresh, God. We thank you for the abundance of your grace. We thank you for the love that you continue to shower and pour out upon each one of us here this morning. We praise you, Father, for how you have sustained us through this uh, difficult period. We thank you, God, as we know that we can continue to trust you, that you would uphold each one of us here through in the coming days, God, as this uh, situation uh, persists. I pray that you would continue to build our faith, God. I pray that we would that you would strengthen us, our inner being. Help us to see, Father, how true your promises are. Help us to be convinced in our hearts and in our mind that indeed you would bring about the things that you have promised for us. Father, I pray that in this journey of faith that each one of us would truly be able to pick up here and there things that we can learn from God in the midst of our experience, no matter whether it's good or bad. I pray, God, that you would just open our spiritual eyes, that we may see. And I pray, God, that through this experience and through these circumstances, that our faith would gradually develop, so that each one of us, God, would truly uh, experience the maturity of our faith. And I pray, Father, that in all this, our eyes would remain focused on Jesus, as our exemplar, as the one who has gone before us, the one who has truly lived out his life in faith and by faith, God. And I pray that each one of us would truly, by your grace, emulate the steps of Jesus in our own ways. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to be gathered again. We praise you and we honor you. Jesus and in prayer. Amen. We saw not just a man of faith who trusted that God will provide, but man who fully followed God no matter what the cost. We saw uh, with the same faith in Daniel's friends when they hoped for God's deliverance from the furnace, but they were willing to obey even if God will not um, deliver them from the furnace. We don't we don't give to be blessed back. We give because He called us to generous giving. Because He wants us to put our faith in Him. We give because we obey because He is God. So let's bow down our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we praise and thank you for all that you are. We are grateful for the kind of Father you are to us loving, forgiving, and gracious. We thank you for your generosity because of who, because, because of you, we are living in love, joy, and abundance, not only materially, but of spiritual blessings and wisdom that only come from you. More blessings of peace, mercy, and grace. We don't deserve these things. There's nothing we've ever done that will make us worthy of what you have blessed us with. We thank you for your grace, that amazing grace that sustains us every day. Your word never ceases to amaze us. Our hearts flourish of thanksgiving for your generosity in our lives. Thank you for giving us your word and your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant us the strength and encourage our hearts that we may bless others as you have blessed us of that um, thank that we may show more of your gratitude to you through our generous offerings to our brothers and sisters. Thank you for your extravagant love and generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. So we have to reset, okay? <laughs> so we have examples of what it's like to live in faith regardless of our circumstances in life. So chapter 11 starts off with a simple definition of what faith is all about. And he's going to um, dwell on two ideas here, that of confidence and also that of assurance. And I'm going to explain to you briefly why this particular verse has given uh, a lot of interpretation, uh, interpreters a hard time trying to pin down what's really being said here. And you would appreciate the differences uh, when you look at the different translations uh, of this particular 
verse. What we will see though, let me just give you a sort of a summary of what's being said, at least in the first three verses here is this. When you trust in what God says, you become convinced that what God wants you to expect will be realized. When you trust, when you place your confidence in what God says, and you will see the emphasis here on the Word of God and the voice of God and things like that, especially in verse 3, you will become convinced. There is a sense that you would have a settled sense of certainty. Let me put it that way. Although we may probably uh, want to distance ourselves from the idea of being certain, but that's really the, the, the focus of this passage. That despite of what's going on, there is a settled certainty in our heart, hearts that whatever it is that God said He would do, this is in the context of the situation of the Christians in Hebrews, it will surely happen. Now you can easily see how faith in itself enables us to treat what lies ahead. This is in the case of unfulfilled promises and what is unseen, realities that cannot be perceived in our own senses, we can treat them as if they are present realities already. This is not wishful thinking. This is not thinking something into being, but this is the idea that because the object of our faith to whom our confidence is placed, that person to whom we are trusting or whom we are trusting is the one who can ensure that these realities are in fact going to happen. Faith treats unseen things as realities, not merely wishes or hopes. What we, do, what we would also see is that faith, in fact, underlies, underlies our experience and perception of spiritual realities. Faith is required in order for us to actually see what God is about to do. Faith is needed in order for us to truly see the realization of everything that we are expecting from God. Let's, let's continue on. So, uh, verse 1, faith is the confidence that we hope that in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. There are two things I have said that are being put together here, but really parallel ideas in order to define what faith is actually all about. So he says it is a form of confidence in what we hope for. And then the parallel line says it's an assurance about what we do not see. The idea of confidence, as it is rendered in the NIV, is really taking on the sort of the subjective sense of this particular word. This word has a range of meaning that could mean uh, two things. One, it could mean um, a reality or a foundation of something, or in the sense of a more subjective idea, that is that of a confidence or um, something that you, you can actually uh, be sure or certain about. But the translators would have to decide whether they would take the subjective or the objective idea and um, all there are the more formal and literal translations like NASB or um, the King James, for example, takes on the more objective sense, which they say that faith is actually sort of the basis or the, the reality of the things that we hope for. And then the parallel idea, they also bring up the idea of um, objective, which is in this case is the proof or the demonstration. Now the NIV and modern translation tend to go to a more subjective sense. Uh, and translate it in this way, as we see, as confidence and then as assurance. Now, the point that many modern translations are doing here is that the faith that's being talked about here is not the faith of God, it's not the faithfulness of God, but it is in fact human faith. It is our response to God. So that is why uh, many tend to see this as more in a subjective sense, in the sense that there is a set of conviction, in the sense that there is assurance, in the sense that there is a firm belief or a trusting belief that everything that we are hoping for would indeed uh, materialize. So what the writer of Hebrews is putting before these Christians is the idea that this is the kind of faith that could help them go through this pain and suffering. This is the kind of faith that can help them patiently endure whatever it is that they are going through. Exactly the same thing for us. This is the kind of faith that is needed in order for us to victoriously go through this period of difficulty or whatever uh, trouble that you are faced with today. So he says here, this is the confidence. It is about being sure about the things that we are hoping for. Confidence really carries the notion of a strong belief uh, in which you're talking about something that you can rely on. It is something that is 
uh, the basis of, of, of something else. It's sort of the foundation still. So it has the same, um, it also carries that, that idea of, a, of an objective uh, reality of some sort. So in this case, in this case, faith is really, so, as I said, the underlying yeah. idea that everything that God has prepared, everything that God has promised for each one of us, uh, that includes salvation, forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and heaven. This is an all-exclusive expression. I mean, you bring in everything there. He said, faith is really our way of looking at those things and claiming them already to be true. Now, I didn't want to, to use the term claiming because nowadays it has become popular to um, you know, a particular theology that became very popular in, in the modern age, the idea of naming and claiming, okay? That's not actually being supported by this particular definition of faith. This is really more the idea that if you are um, a person of faith is one who has a trusting belief, a deep sense of belief, a, a strong uh, conviction of some sort that these things that are being promise you know, are something that he can even clearly see uh, or treat as present realities because that's how sure these things are going to materialize. It is in what we hold for. So the idea is faith is really connected to the attainment of these particular goals or these things that God has promised for them. So he says that if you have faith, you can be confident that all this will eventually happen. If you have faith, you can uh, hope or you can aim uh, that you would end up attaining this divine favor, this salvation, or this promised blessing. In other words, in faith, we can hope uh, uh, things that we hope for would turn into reality. So faith is sort of that key ingredient, uh, the, the thing that really uh, sort of make, uh, uh, transforms uh, what may be a future thing into something that is present. Also, the parallel idea is that a faith is assurance. This is being convinced. And he talks about the object of uh, the, the, this thing that he is assured about are the things that we do not see. So what the writer of Hebrews is uh, wanting to point out to us is that there are realities. In this case, things that may not necessarily be perceived by our physical eyes, but in faith, we can actually see them. So, Faith then gives us a certain kind of sight or insight into what God is doing or trying to accomplish in our life. Now this is particularly relevant for the Christians that the writer is actually addressing here. They are going through a, a difficult period of persecution. Uh, they are suffering. Uh, they are dealing with pain. Uh, their lives are being threatened. And then he's wanting them to understand that there are things that are happening and going on in your midst that you will not be able to appreciate unless you in fact believe in God. So faith in this case is what's really going to fuel them. It's what's going to help them perceive the invisible realities that are out there that may seem to have been clouded by the physical realities that they are dealing with. So faith, in this case, is more than just hoping for things to get better. Faith is more than just uh, you know crossing our fingers and and uh, the, the hoping that the worst would not happen. But faith is actually sort of looking at a different plot line, if you may. You know how it is when we watch a movie and uh, whatever type of movies there is, there is always that. Uh, obvious uh, plot line that is happening but if you've been uh, watching let's say a series of shows uh, that runs for a season you would also see that there is another level of plot that is going on something is being moved forward and being accomplished so faith in a way opens our eyes to that kind of plot line the overarching story that is in that is something that God is working out in our life and our life and our circumstances is just one part of that particular bigger story. It is faith that enables us to appreciate what is happening that may not be easily perceivable by our own naked eyes. 
In verse 2, which is really the intro to everything else that he's going to talk about uh, when he mentions to us this uh, great examples of faith, he said, this is what the ancients were commended for. There were a lot of things that God would say about people in the Old Testament and in ancient times, but most of that, if not all of that, has always something to do with that individual's faith. People were commended, they were attested, or they received recommendation or commendation because of their faith. They were set apart, they were distinguished because of their faith. So this is a way of telling them, you know, if you hold on to your faith and do not shrink back, if you stand on your faith and do not defect, that's what's going to characterize you and set you apart as a follower of Jesus. Another element that is added to this definition of faith is the one that we see in verse 3. And we're, I'm just going to cover it up to this point and continue on uh, next Sunday. Verse 3 says, by faith. So it tells us faith is some kind of a trusting belief. It is trusting in the word of God. It is holding on to God's promises. It is being assured that everything that's been promised to you is true. But then in verse 3 says, by faith we understand. I like the Reformation mantra where they say, uh, faith seeking understanding. You're able to see the grander uh, redemptive plan that God has, has initiated already. In this case, by faith it says, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. This is obviously an allusion to Genesis chapter 1 when God spoke and everything came into being. Now, again, this is not necessarily addressing, uh, you know, the, the theory of evolution in any way, but it gives us already the idea that what's being declared here or affirmed here is the fact that the things that we see them now did not emanate or originate from things that are already visible. That's what it says. By faith we understand that the universe were, was formed at God's command. God spoke and things came to be so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Remember I told you that the faith here is really tied to the idea of God's promises and that is why in verse 3 it's God's command. It's the voice of God. So here the idea is that um, we can understand now when we believe, later on it's going to say you, know, you have to believe that God exists. In this case you can believe that God created the universe and that God brought things into being out of nothing when you know, when, you, when you actually place the confidence on the word of God, in this case, that is his command. So the affirmation is that it doesn't, did not, the, the universe as we know it did not originate from something else. He denies strongly that what is seen came into being from things that are visible. So it is by faith, it is when we are Placing our confidence on God's promises, on who He is, it is when we are assured that God is going to do what He said He would do, that we also gain a better appreciation of everything else that God has done in the past. It is very important that He would bring up the idea of creation. Remember, what these people are concerned about is the future. They don't know what lies ahead. They don't know how things will turn out for them. And the writer of Hebrews is just clever enough to say, look at this God who brought things into existence. This same God, by His power, when you trust and believe in Him, when you accept His promises, when you hang on to everything that He said He would do, He will surely bring about everything else that He has promised to you. So that's sort of the historical argument for him. So this is what it means to trust them. To trust God in a way is really about being sure. Let me use that term. Being sure in our hearts and in our minds. On the one whom, to whom we are placing our confidence in. And you probably noticed that in recent days, you know, newspapers and opinion articles would always talk about uh, their forecast of the economy or how things will turn out in the next um, 
a few months or even years. I mean, people are uh, disagreeing nowadays whether we would recover in 2021 or it would take a couple more years before we recover. And I have no trust and confidence in those people when they're just keep, they just keep on adjusting and guessing what could possibly happen. Aren't you glad that the God of the Bible isn't like that? Aren't you glad that the same God who promises salvation, who promises deliverance, who promises eternal life and forgiveness of sins, who promises that He will take us with Him when He comes again, is not gonna go into, is not going to adjust and send an updated memo about you know schedules and all that and and you know and qualifying that you know God, he, he didn't really say it that way, He didn't really meant it that way. We have a God who can be trusted. So that when he says, I will take you with him, when he says, I will provide for your needs, when, when he says that he will forgive us, he will surely do it. We can always be confident that everything that he said, we can expect from him, he will truly do and accomplish. Faith or trusting God is really being sure in our hearts and in our minds that even the things that are not seen or cannot be seen by our physical eyes, these things that God promised to us would indeed be realized. I mean, you know, a lot of I mean, this is this is very close to what the Apostle Paul says that we should not, uh, you know, walk by by sight. We should live by faith. Right? Because the tendency for our uh, senses uh, is to really gravitate uh, and, and, and sort of create some element of doubt when we look at circumstances, right? And, and I, I like uh, you know, uh, this, this um, um, uh, insight that I picked up from, uh, uh, from Tim Keller, where he, he argues that uh, a lot of times the idea is not so much that the doubt actually emanates uh, from our mind. A lot of times, the doubt is really created by our perception of how things are. Isn't that the case? Let's say, for example, we are convinced, we have read in the scriptures, that God will supply uh, for our needs. That He will meet our needs. And, and that, that God is faithful, that uh, if we believe, for example, and convinced that we are, uh, hey, we have aligned ourselves to the will of God. I mean, that you know, we are convinced that God is leading us to the right path, and this is what God wants for us. Uh, those elements are covered, and we can really trust God. But when we look at our physical circumstances and how things are, it's very easy for our own perception to actually create the doubt in our minds and sort of erode our faith. In fact, this is exactly how PR communication works. They don't have to tell you one lie, one big fat lie. They're going to tell you a little bit of lies and they're going to tell it to you repeatedly. And that's what's going to erode your sense of confidence about either a thing or a person or whatever that may be. They bring you they call it reality check, but a lot of times it's really a, 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 a view, a particular view of reality. And that's what really generates that sense of doubt in our hearts. But what faith does and what it gives us is this settled sense of confidence that somehow we become sure in our hearts and in our mind that God would indeed do what He said He would do. In short, Faith is really trusting in what God promised. Trusting in what God said He would do. Whether what it is that He said is um, something that is in the future, or whatever it is that God promised may be unseen at this point, but we have to continue to trust God. It is trusting that the unseen and the things in the future would in fact happen so that you can even treat those things as present realities now. But, you know, aside from that, uh, there's not much really to see out there that could sort of lift our spirit, right? Most people, I think, nowadays are more guarded. 
they're sort of, you know, let's stay in a little barracks, you know, let's let's wall ourselves up and just peer out the wall and, and see what's happening outside. Are zombies showing up already or something like that? Right? That's not gonna go out yet. Let's wait and see. Well, if that's our only basis, if that's the only way that we could uh, perceive and think of the future, we're going to be miserable. We're going to be adjusting ourselves every now and then uh, to the changing circumstances of our times. If the vaccine shows up, then we're happy. And then when people are affected, you know, experience the side effects of the vaccine, we become sad again. When we hear of a spike of the cases in this particular Nepal, we become sad again. And we get affected, and you will go through this uh, roller coaster of emotions, I should say. But what the scripture is wanting us to have at this point is to see that faith in God, trusting God and trusting what He says, is really that stabilizing effect. It's, that's the factor. You know, I'm, I'm, in, in, in recent months, I had to um, learn a little bit about, you know, shooting a video and editing a video. And I must confess, I'm responsible for those horrible videos you've seen recently. Um, but I, I got to learn some of the equipment and all that. And there's one fascinating equipment that I, 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 I love. I don't own it, but I just see uh, some photographers and videographers use. It's called a gimbal. This thing, when you mount the camera on it, it doesn't matter whether you shake or you, you do whatever you want, that thing will shoot a stabilized video or picture. It's quite amazing. And you know, you know what I'm talking about? They just pretend, you know. <laughs> that is why you know why you see uh, cameramans, for example, running or they're mounted on a vehicle and they would see a steady shot of, of the uh, see a steady image. It's wonderful. That thing compensates for whatever changes or forces that the camera is subjected to and retains a stabilized image every time. Similar to a gyroscope. I think it has that kind of element. It's fascinating. And, and I think that's what faith does to each one of us and should do to each one of us. So in these changing times, when we are subjected to all for you, to continue to place your confidence in it. Be assured that this God is going to hold you and hold your life in His hands and prove Himself to be faithful. Remain in faith and continue to trust Him. Shall we do that? Let me pray for us. Lord, we are weak, God, and at times we become, uh, we doubt. Father, at times we, we become so uh, full of anxiety. We realize that uh, we are really weak in our inner being. So we ask, Father, that you would forgive us for our faithlessness at times. We seek for your forgiveness, God, for a lot of times we second guess you. Our prayer, God, is that even today, starting today, would you strengthen us? Would you enable us by your grace to truly exercise the kind of faith that Hebrews 11 is talking about, God? Father, I pray that by your Spirit, you would enable us um, to see that indeed we can hang on to your promises that we can hold on to your word, God. Father, I pray that you would increase our sense of confidence, that you would deepen our sense of assurance, God. I pray, Father, that you would just strengthen our spirits, that we may learn to trust you. Trust you through these dark periods in our life, God. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters here who may be in the middle of a struggle, God. Those of us who are just dealing with
financial issues, provisions for our needs. I pray, Father, that you would lift them up, that you would give them more strength, God, that you renew their spirit, that they would learn to continue to trust you. Father, for those of us who are just so anxious and bothered about what's happening, I pray that you would just be with them, God. Enable them to see that you are the God who provided peace in the midst of all this. God, our prayer is that you would always help us uh, to realize Realize our limitations, God, and accept our inadequacies. And in doing so, God, help us to see that there is strength that is available in you. Father, as we look at the future, help us to see everything, God, in the context of your promises. Help us to filter what we read and what we hear about our current situation in the world, God, uh, through the filter of your word. Help us to understand things in the context of who you are as the faithful God. Father, I pray that you would enable us as we leave this place, God, to have the to reinforce uh, faith and confidence in us so that whatever comes our way God you will bring stability in our hearts and in our minds but we will not be shaken but we will continue to hang on to your word in Jesus name would you please join me in standing